Arise! That's the sound of war! And stay ye not, but pursue after your enemy and smite the highmost of them. Fall upon them. Fall upon them. Fall upon them. them. Fall upon them. Fall upon them. Welcome to this channel, my brothers and my sisters. This message is going to be entitled, The Blind Guide Dog. Think of a blind man walking with his guide, and that is his dog. With his staff, filling his way through life. This is a picture of the Christian church. They are walking with the dog. Encourage you to recover yourself from that snare. And we're going to start off with Jesus being God's Isaiah. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. The prophet Isa, peace be upon him, was a picture of Isaiah going about blinding the people. Lest at any time the people would hear, see, understand with their hearts, and be converted. If you don't understand that the prophet Isa's ministry was not only to open the blinded eye, but to blind people, you're going to have a hard time understanding him. And he counseled you in Revelations 3.18 to anoint your eyes with eye solve. Eye cleansing is what the church needs. They need to see that he is nothing more than a messenger and that he is a slave of Allah. Get it? Eye solve. You need to see he's a slave of Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. Jesus blinded the Pharisees. This is in John 9. Let's take our time and let's see today. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens your eyes so that you may recover yourself from the snare. If that is what he permits for you. This is going to be John chapter 9 verse 39. And Jesus said, for judgment I am come into this world. That they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Now, when you think of the Pharisees, the Pharisees today are the Christians. The religion of Christianity came to us from Saul, who was a Pharisee. Most Christians don't even understand that his name used to be Saul. Okay? And we're speaking of Paul. And Jesus not only opened the blinded eye, but he blinded people. He blinded the Pharisees. Now let's go to Paul's conversion. When Paul was converted, Supposedly, there was something strange about his conversion. This is in Acts chapter 9. Let's go to verse 17. And Ananias went his way, and he entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul. Now, did he say Apostle Saul? No. Brother Saul. Is he the only one that called Saul a brother? No. Peter didn't call him apostle either. Peter called him brother. And Ananias called him brother. He right here, let me tell you something. He is not the apostle that was ordained of God. He is the self-proclaimed apostle. And here we have Ananias laying his hands on brother Saul. 
And he says, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared. Let's pay attention to that word appeared. Now in the Quran it says, neither did they kill him, speaking of the prophet Isa, or crucify him. For Allah took him. Then it goes on to say, it was only made to appear to them that way. And here we have Jesus appearing to Saul. But let's see what he does with Saul. Did he open Saul's eyes or did he close Saul's eyes? Going on. That appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it hath been scales. Now, when Jesus appeared to him, he blinded him. He blinded him. This is in perfect harmony with Isaiah chapter 6, 9, and 10. This was Isaiah's job. Isaiah was a remarkable prophet. He was the only prophet that was sent to not only make the ears of the people heavy, but also blind the people. That's why Jesus said, blessed are you for your eyes see and your ears hear. Because Jesus, man, he was blinding people. And the first person he blinds is Paul, which he said he would do in John chapter 9. So look at that. The truth right under your nose. The truth is right before your eyes. If you just read the Bible all over with new eyes, with the eye psalm, you will see things that you looked over. So with all this in mind, we see that Jesus appeared to Paul and he blinded him. Let that sink in. Yes, he did exactly what Isaiah did. Now think of Isaiah and think of Isa. They both start off with I-S-A. Their names are practically the same. Isaiah, his name means salvation of the Lord. However, Isa names mean simply salvation. So now let's think of something. Why is Jesus called the Son of Man? Why was Jesus called the Son of David? This is because Jesus was the Son of Saul. Now let that sink in. Think of the Old Testament song. Think of David, King David. Who was his father? His father was Saul. Now fast forward to the New Testament. The son of David. Who was his father? His father was Saul. Whose name is Paul? This is the reason why Joseph was present. Now why is Jesus the slave of Allah? Why do we call him the slave of Allah? Because Jesus was the Canaan. He was the Canaan who had to be a servant of servants to his brothers. Now, this is all perfectly seen in Genesis 9, 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward, and covered their nakedness of their father, and their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son, key words, younger, this is going all the way up to Benjamin, the younger son, we'll catch up with that later, had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. This is why Jesus was called the slave of Allah. Because Jesus was the Canaan. You have to get this. He had to bear the iniquity of Paul. Paul came after Christ. And he made Christ 
king in his religion. He made him Lord in his religion. And he made himself the father of Jesus. In other words, Jesus was not the son of Almighty. He wasn't the son of Allah. Okay? He was the son of God. And why why do I say God? Because he was the son of the dog. He was the son of Paul. He was the son of Saul. This makes sense. This is why Paul is the false Abraham. And we're going to take a deeper look into Luke 16. And you're going to catch something that's been right up under your nose. Jesus had a supernatural birth. And Jesus will have a natural death. In other words, he started off as a God. Okay. Courtesy of Paul, the people have made him a God. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to cause all that stuff to cease, okay? That stuff is going to stop. And God is going to give him a natural death. In other words, everyone is going to see him as he really is, a man. Especially when Allah causes him to die. That is going to bring all of the glory back to the Father. We are living in the day. When Joshua, which is the Hebrew name for Jesus, spoke to the sun and the sun stood still. All that son of God stuff, that stuff is going to come to an end. It is. And Allah is exalted in might. And I give him all of the praises. Jesus had no father. Allah has no sons. The only father Jesus had was Paul. Just like the only earthly father Jesus had was Joseph. Now, this might be too much for you to catch. It's it's a little advanced, but you're going to have to catch this. You're going to have to understand that Jesus was the son of David because he was the son of Saul. Think of Abraham. Abraham went from Abram to Abraham. He added a wicked man by the name of Ham unto his name because that was a picture of Paul. He was the man who claimed to be the father and Jesus was cursed as a result of that. That's why Paul keeps telling you That he sinned ignorantly. It was as if he got the revelation that he made a huge error. And most of the Christians do not read the letters of Paul. And if you read Galatians, he tells you that Christ was cursed. And I understand that curse to be the curse of Canaan. And that was him being a servant of a servants, and this is seen over and over again through the story of Joseph. Joseph was sold as a slave. Joseph was a picture of Christ. Jesus constantly keeps giving you all of these parables, and the problem with the Christian is they look at the parable and they take it literally. Everything Jesus spoke was in the parable. It takes extreme studying. It takes deep thought. You're not going to be able to get it at face value. Now, let's go to Luke 16, and we're going to go to Joshua today. I'm taking my time with you because I want you to get this. Luke 16 and 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Now, this is Paul, and this is a picture of the Christian church, and I'll show you why. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. Now, this is a picture of Christ. Let's keep going. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs 
which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Now, let's pick back up on 21. The rich man had crumbs falling. And Lazarus was the poor beggar. He wanted to eat those. And it says the dogs came and licked his sores. Now think of the Christian church taking communion. They drink Jesus' blood in a figure. They eat his body in a figure. Look at this. You see this right here. So we have the wolves, <laughs> the wolves in sheep clothing, which is the Christian church, licking Lazarus, okay, drinking his blood, going on. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Now, this is the picture of the judgment on Paul and the Christian church. And see of Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So why do we have a picture of Paul in connection with Abraham? Here he is in the judgment. And he sees Abraham afar off. Notice Saul has the gift of seeing. He saw Islam in the future and he cursed it. Okay, what else did he see? He foresaw Jesus and he rejoiced. Remember, Jesus told the Pharisees, Abraham rejoiced. Okay, he saw me. He's, he, he's seen me and he rejoiced. That wasn't talking about the Abraham of the past. He said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. That was Paul. Paul has this gift of seeing things, and we see it's through divination. Going on. Now, he's in hell, and he sees Abraham. And here's Lazarus, which is a picture of Christ. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us, in you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So this is giving us the ultimate truth about the teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Right here in this parable, we see that this cannot happen, as also is seen in the Quran. If you die, you can't come back. Okay, you have to wait to the day of resurrection which the Quran tells us. But right here we have the false teaching of the Pharisee, the man by the name of Paul, who is the first person to teach that Jesus rose from the grave. And right here in this parable, this is the first time the phrase rose from the dead is mentioned in scripture. And the person who wanted somebody to come back from the dead is in hell fire. This is a picture of Paul, I told you. This is the leaven of the Pharisees. The teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead is the leaven of the Pharisees that Jesus warned his disciples about. Going on. 27, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them lest they also come in this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Now that was Paul's problem. He's teaching repentance based on the death of a righteous man on the cross. Paul was in error. Paul was following the belief system of the Pharisees of that day. The Pharisees and the Israelites all together 
always was killing righteous men for their sins. This is the reason why they were killing the prophets. They were killing the prophets doing the same thing they tried to do to the prophet Isa. They was killing a righteous man to cover their sins. That was the whole downfall of Israel. They kept killing the sons to cover the sins of the father. That's where Christianity came from. And here we have the founder of Christianity right here in hell. Now keep in mind, the Quran, the Hadiths, they're so spot on. Because in the religion of Islam, we have the teaching that there is a hell by the name of Paul. In the Arabic tongue, it is called Bulas. And it is a prison in hell, okay, for all the disbelievers. And this is a parable. And this is Prophet Isa, which was a Muslim. And he's giving us the revelation of the man who caused the whole world to be deceived. This is a picture of the second Adam. The first Adam was a, oh, damn, a big mess up. Something happened, okay? It's what we're taught in the Bible. Now, the second Adam was not necessarily Christ. It was his twin. The second all damn, the second screw up was what Paul did. What Paul did was worse than what Adam did. It was like five times over. And we have the revelation in this parable right here. So perfect. So picture perfect, the first person to teach the resurrection of the dead is in hell. Wow. And look at the wisdom of God. God allows the false Abraham to meet the real Abraham. And the real Abraham tells him that you should have listened to Moses and the prophets. You started off on the right track, Paul. Okay, you were killing the witches. You were killing them. But what happened? You did exactly what your ancestor Saul did, who was killing the witches, and then started hearkening unto the witches. And then we see the perfect set of laws in Exodus 20. God never, ever wanted the son to bear the sins of the father. But if there's a man, Claiming to be the father, wanting the people to bow, okay, then his son has to pay the iniquity of his father. Let's get Exodus 20 real quick. Let's get the judgment because you got to understand that God was judging Christianity in the beginning. God is way ahead of us and he gives us the end from the beginning. So in the first set of laws in Exodus Chapter 20, let's get it real quick. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. This is what happened to Canaan. Because of his father, seeing his father's nakedness, Canaan was cursed as a result of it. And because of Paul claiming to be the father, Jesus had to bear that curse. He had to be that servant. This is God's wisdom right here in the book of Exodus. And we see that Jesus said this when Satan came to tempt him. Satan told him he would give him all of this glories. And, and Jesus said, worship the Lord your God. And him only shalt thy serve. God doesn't serve nobody for those who claim that Jesus is God. Jesus was a servant. God doesn't serve nobody. We serve him. Listen to how y'all sound. This is because of your rich white man's Bible teaching. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm ashamed of the devil. Okay, I have to expose the wickedness of Edom right here in America. The teaching of Jesus, the teaching of the Bible. These men have failed us. 
And because of this failure, many people right now are on their way to a hot hell. Jesus is not God. God does not serve people. Jesus was a servant. We all are supposed to worship one God and we are all supposed to serve him. And God's judgment was in the beginning that if somebody starts bowing down to other gods, well, guess what? All of y'all, the father and the son is going to be slaughtered together. And that's why Jesus had to bear the iniquity of Paul and the Christians and Paul and all of them are going to be a ransom for the righteous. This was God's way right here in the beginning. And he tells us in Deuteronomy 24, 16, the son shall not bear the sins of the father. He doesn't want that to happen. But if we're going to have a boy come along around here and start a new religion and, and, and claim to be the father and he wants some uh, son worship going on, oh, oh, then that son has to die too. And that is the fate of Isa. He is like the Joseph that was in the pit. He is like the Joseph who's done nothing to be in this prison. Going on. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. In other words, there was no need for this teaching that Jesus rose from the dead. They were supposed to follow the religion of Moses and the prophets going on. But look what he says in verse 30. And he say, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Now, ain't that what Paul teaches? Repent, receive Jesus Christ, who died on the tree for our sins. This is what Paul teaches. He teaches the resurrection of one man named Christ. Verse 31. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. Listen to what he say. Though one rose from the dead, even if it happened. In other words, it didn't happen. Jesus didn't rise from the dead. That, that, that leaven of the Pharisees is nothing but false teaching. And we see this right here in Luke 16. Now, what I want to do is I want to read to you from the Hadiths about the prison in hell. Because I brought it out, but many people haven't heard of this Hadith. It's going to be in book 37, Hadith 2680. The proud will be gathered on the day of judgment, resembling tiny particles in the image of men. They will be covered with humiliation everywhere. They will be dragged into a prison in hell called Paul, Bulas, submerged in the fires of fires, drinking the drippings of the people of the fire, filled with derangement. Now, you connect with an Arabic brother and ask him, what does Bulas mean? He will tell you that's the name Paul. So here we have further revelation on the judgment of Paul and not only Paul by himself but the Christian church. Now, let's go over what we brought out. We established the fact that Jesus was the Canaan. He was a servant of servants. He was born into a curse, all because of what Paul did. And now he has to be the cup bearer for Paul. He has to be in this predicament with Paul until the day that Allah breaks the yoke from off his neck and allows him to come back and destroy the cross. Going on, we understand that Paul was a false Abraham. Now think of Abraham. If Abraham was a picture of Paul, who was his son? Isa or Isaac. See, Isa. How come Isa is under Abraham? Go to David and Saul. David was the son of Saul. Keep going. Then we have Jesus. 
He was the son of man because he was the son of Paul. So that expression, the son of man, the son of God is all going into a son of Paul. Now, let's go to the day that the sun stood still. We have to understand that there is coming a day when the sun will stand still. Let's go to Joshua 10 and 12. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? Now, you have to pay attention. Get some ice off right here. Listen to what it says. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven. Now, this is going into Christ because this is what they call him. This is that annoying teaching that's been going forth. Listen, and hasten not to go down about a whole day. Now, verse 14 is key. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of of a man. See, here we have Jesus because that's Joshua. Joshua is Jesus. Okay? And he makes a prayer for God to make the sun stand still. And God listened. And it says there never was a day when God listened to the voice of a what? Of a God? No. Jesus is not God. Joshua's not God of a man. One man by the name of the prophet Isa is going to put it in to this son worship. He's going to do it himself. He's going to do that when he comes back and attacks the Christian church. When he destroys the cross, that's why he's the Messiah. He is the Messiah for this cause. He's going to fix what Paul messed up. He is God's Isaiah. And he's going to come back. And he's going to put an end. To all of his son worship. He's going to be like Samson. In between the two pillars. Destroying the cross. Because it put out his eyes. To see all this son worship. He doesn't like it. He don't like all of this son worship. He's going to. Put out. The lamp. <laughs> On Delilah's church. <laughs> Delilah's church is going to be destroyed. There's coming a day when Allah is going to get his renowned glory. He is going to cause Jesus to die. And that's why Jesus said, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. It abide alone. But if it die, it will multiply. There is a such thing as a sweet death. And the sweet death is going to be when Allah causes Jesus to die. That is going to bring all of the glory to the most high. God is wise. Allah is exalted in might. He is wise. And when he causes Jesus to die, that is going to be the victory for himself. Now, I encourage you, brothers, to study. Understand that Jesus was a Canaan. He was a servant of servants. He was a slave of Allah because he was a servant of servants. He came into a religion that he had no choice. It was all forced upon him before he was born. He was already the lamb slain from the foundations of the world. He was born into a lie that Paul was going to preach. And all because of what Paul did, all because of what Adam did, Jesus had to bear that curse. And Allah is exalted in might. And this is the way he chose 
to allow many people to go astray. He's exalted in might. He, he's wise. And look at that study and you'll see that Jesus was the Canaan. He was the servant of servants all because of Ham, which was a picture of Paul looking upon his father's nakedness. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.